Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first ever webinar session brought to you by m and Multimedia Technology Institute. My name is Martin Valimse, and tonight we're going to bring you drum programming made easy. So a lot of programmers are struggling to get the production started because they don't have experience or skills in drumming, uh, hence why they struggle to uh, program uh, drums. Uh, we're also going to show you a little bit uh, about uh, some drum program techniques and uh, I want to introduce you to Ben Bauer uh, who is going to do uh, tonight's uh, webinar. Uh, ben is a session drummer and a music producer, recording mixing engineer and also the owner of Sonic Sky Studio. Uh, he is also one of our lecturers here at m and Multimedia Technology Institute so, uh, Bern, uh, hi there, and um, thank you for being here tonight, and with no further ado, I'm going to give you over to Bern. Uh, so, thank you very much, and let's do this. Hello, guys. Uh, this is Baron. Live from m &D. welcome to our very first webinar. Uh, I hope you guys are excited as I am to start this. So basically what we are going to be doing is we're going to look at how to create your own drum sequencing beats and how it's going to help you, especially with workflow wise, just to make your workflow quicker and you'll just understand exactly about beats and bars, where goes what and how you can experiment in a kind of a safe zone where you know stuff will sound cool because face it that's what we want to do you want your drums to sound cool okay so um if you guys can see here i am using contact today and i've just got a funk drum kit going on at the moment and if you see i've got the drum kit open in front of me so let's just take a quick look at what a drum kit is and the different types of drums that you find on a drum kit and the common uses for them because the thing is all of this this is creativity guys all of this is your own creativity so you can use anything for anything on a drum kit but on in this webinar we are just going to go through the key aspects of what the role is of that drum and how to use it when creating your beat okay so first let's start off by the kick drum right in the middle this guy over here. Okay, so the kick drum and the snare drum, right? I call them the fundamentals of the beat. Because, because the thing is, they are basically what is going to create your groove. Okay, those two together, that's your groove. Okay, so for example, if I just play this. Right, just that. That's already some kind of groove. Okay, so let's move on. If you can see, these are the hi-hats, right? This is two cymbals that are tightly squeezed onto each other and controlled by your other foot because you've got two foot beat. <laughs> Sorry. And um, so the thing is then over here, right? Yeah, we've got the right cymbal. So the hi-hats and the right. I'll call these the timekeepers, right? You're going to see later on how we're going to apply all of these drums and then these names are going to make sense. Okay. So we've got our timekeepers, right? We've got our fundamentals, and then also we have our toms. Okay, so you guys may have heard toms in some kind of music, because believe me, they are everywhere as well. So the thing is, toms we use as transitions between sections of songs. So these little transitions are called fills, and mainly what fills use is they mainly use your toms, right? So if you can see, we've got our high tom, our mid high tom, our mid low tom, and then our very low tom. So this very low tom, also known as a floor tom. Okay. So then, as you can see at the top here, we've got our two crash symbols. Now, drummers love crash symbols, believe me, because you only need one, but we place two there because it's just more fun to hit both at the same time with both hands, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so these crash symbols, they are used to 
accent new sections of songs, for example, between your intro and your verse and maybe your second verse and your chorus. So these will be played mainly at the start of a new section or in random accents in your music. You also have these two guys. So I like to see these as effects symbols, right? So we've got our splash symbol. It's a little splash symbol. And then we also have our China symbol. And you can hear these symbols, because they are effect symbols, is because they've got uh, unordinary sounds, right? If you can, I mean, listen to this. That's a weird sound. But it gets used a lot because it's cool, it's creative, anything can go. Okay, so now that we've got the basic drum kit, right, sorted out, you know the elements, you know what this is all. So let's actually put that to use now. Okay, so let's start first by explaining beats and bars. Okay, because if I'm going to say beat five of bar two and blah, 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 then you must know what I talk about because that is how people are going to talk about, especially drummers and people that do drum sequencing. They talk like that. So you must know the language. Okay, so let me just zoom in here a little bit. Okay. So if you can see right at the top here, you see is bar one, you see a one slash one, one slash two, one slash three, one slash four, and then it starts again, two slash one, two slash two, two slash three, two slash four. Okay, so in other words, this whole one section, this is one bar, okay, and those one, two, three, fours that comes after the one in this first highlighted section, those are beats inside a bar, right? So you get beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four inside one bar. Okay. So every bar has got four beats in this example. Okay. So let's start with the actual sequencing. Okay. So I just made my selection here. Let me just consolidate this. By pressing Option Shift 3, there you go, consolidated. Now I just double click on it, and now I've got open here the MIDI editor. Okay, so in that contact VST, those drums are placed everywhere. This piano roll that you can see here. Okay, up here, that's this is the whole bar one, right? This is the whole bar one. Beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. If you can see on each beat, there's a gray line that is not as faded as the other gray lines that you see over there. Okay, so it's, it just makes it easier to see where exactly your beats are in the bar. So to make things easy, let me just scroll up here. Okay, we're going to start with our timekeepers. Remember, I talked about the timekeepers, the hi hats, and the rides. Now we're just going to start with a hi hat for now, okay? So there's our hi hat sound, All right? So let's just put a hi hat one. Oops, let me just remove that hi hat. Let's go there, okay? So let me just put it in there grid mode, okay? Where's that hi hat? There it is. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, right? So now, if I play that back, right? That's over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our four beats in one bar. Right. So keep the height, your timekeepers, right? Because it acts like a metronome. That's kind of why I call the timekeeper. Keep them on each one, each one beat of the bar for now. Then, as a general rock type of groove, right? So I'm just going to give you guys this groove and then we're going to work from that. So, We've got that, and then over here is our kick drum. We want our kick drum to be on one and on three, right? So at the moment, what we have here is we've got, right? You can hear the kick is on one, three. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now we're going to place the snare drum, which will be where about here. Yeah, yes, there we go. That's a nice sound. Okay. Snare drum on two and four. Okay. 
So if we just play that back, see, this is like the recipe for a basic groove. So start with this groove, and I'm going to show you how to expand on this groove. Because if you have this down, you can just progress on this. Okay, so let's listen to that. Right? Basic. Doom. Da. Cool. So let's actually, let's double time the hi-hats, right? Because these timekeepers, remember, they are on the first bar now, but we can, the first beat of bar one, right? First, second, third, and fourth. But we can actually just duplicate it, right? Just select all of them there. So, okay. So, let's hear it out now. Right? I just doubled it. That's all I did. I just doubled it and... Look at that big difference that it made. Right. So, with that said, if you can see, so here's our first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, right? You got that already. Now, what we can do is we can experiment and place more kick drums in this first beat because that's where the kick is right now. And in this third beat, we can place more kicks in there. And then same with the second beat and the fourth beat. We can place more snare drums in there just to make it more interesting. So let's just do that. Let's play, uh, let's say another kick there, another kick there. And then we're working with kicks in this range. Let's say another kick there and another kick there, right? So let's just listen to how that would sound now. See, immediately much more groove, much more groove. That's why the kick and the snare together, they are your groove. That is your groove, okay. So, next thing, I'm just going to add some more snares as well, just to make that nice. So add a snare there, and ah, let's say two snares there. Why not? Okay. Cool. Yes. Okay. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. Okay. So, now we've got that, right? And I said that we can use these heights as timekeepers, right? So what we're going to do now is let me just select all of these timekeepers and let's move this to our other timekeeper, which was the right symbol, right? Let's go. There you go. That's a right symbol. Right. There's our right symbol. But let's make it interesting. Like we added... Like we added, yeah, with the kick drums and the snare drums, we're going to add random um, notes as well, random shots, rather, to our timekeeper as well. So let me add one there, let me add one there, and let me add two there, right? Because we can do anything. We're free to do anything. Okay. So let me just play that. You can, yeah, still in time just sounds more groovy it has more groove to it which is nice okay now if i talk about an offbeat because you'll hear people say put this on the offbeat put that on the offbeat people talk about offbeats people want stuff on offbeats especially with um these days with the indie type of music they have a lot of offbeats especially on these timekeepers of ours right the snares uh, the hiats or the rides so, on beat, if you think about this, on beat is on one, right? And on two, and on three, and on four. That's on beat, right? And if you can see, there is four blocks in each one of these beats, right? So, half of that would be the second, right? So, that is exactly off of the beat. If your beat's on one, you put a beat on three, that is exactly off, right? So that may, that may sound a bit confusing, but just listen to how this would sound. Okay, so there's our one, two, three. Okay, on our three, let's insert, yeah, that'll be cool. Open hi hat, right? On three over there, three over there, three over there, three over there. Okay, so let's just play back that. Right? There you have it. That sounds cool. Just with that offbeat added, immediately you have that jumpy kind of indie vibe to it. 
right? Because if you're phrasing, if you understand the phrasing, 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 <laughs> if you understand phrasing, then it all makes more sense. Okay, so we've got our first bar there, right? So we take it, say command, duplicate, 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 right? Because a phrase, a musical phrase is eight bars. Because if you think about it, in in normal type of music, especially dance music, then eight bars is kind of the thing. You've got eight bars in your intro. You've got eight bars in your first verse. You've got eight bars in your chorus, sometimes 16, but I mean, that's just a multiple of eight, so you can do what you want with that. But so a phrase is eight bars, right? So then four bars is your sub phrase. Okay, so let's just say that in our sub phrase, that we have going here now, right? Which is the first four bars. We want something to change. Otherwise, it's gonna be it's just gonna start to get boring. Okay. So for our fourth bar, right? We're gonna take that one and we're gonna take the beat completely out and we are going to add a fill to that, right? Because remember I said we use toms to create fills, and fills are the bars that emphasizes the next section of your song right and um and it just it just has some variation in it so it makes it more exciting and personally that is actually the part where the drummer can show off a little bit <laughs> anyway okay so let's go into this fourth one okay so i'm going to delete the beat that's in there now okay so you don't have to use the toms right but just to give you a clearer education, education, just to give you a clearer indication of a fill, right? I'll just insert a fill here, which everyone has heard before. Okay, so let's say dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Okay, for example, right, a fill. Right, that is your normal, basic, boring fill. Sorry to say, but yes, it is boring, okay? But hopefully you guys have a clear understanding of what a fill is now, okay? So, with fills, right, if it's sequencing, if it's playing live, all of that, there is a secret. Yes, there is a secret, and I'm going to share this secret with you now. The secret is rudiments. Rudiments, rudiments, rudiments. If you know your rudiments, your fills will be excellent. Okay, so let's just go through them. Okay, so you get single stroke rolls, right? Or single stroke shots. And if you think about a single stroke, right? It's literally a single shot. So it's a single shot on a drum. So for example, if I take this drum and I move it down, move this down, move this down, this like that, like that, like that, like that, right? So those that I did over here, those are single shots on the drums. Doom, 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 right? So, right? Those are single shots. So that is what you call single strokes, right? So you can position them anywhere over the drums, and that is a type of fill that you can create. You can place it anywhere, single strokes. But the thing is, um, it's a bit boring as well. So what I'm going to show you now is... Okay, let's just add some more of those. Wait, let me just delete these. Delete. Okay. Just take these. I'm just going to copy them over. Zoop. Okay, cool. Right, so single strokes. Okay, but it, it kind of sounds like a Jaws of the Jungle type of stuff. Okay. So, in case you're going for that vibe, cool, but in this case, we're not. So, the next rudiment is double strokes, right? Double strokes. So, a single strokes is one hit on a single drum, right? Double strokes is just two hits on those drums. Now, this is where stuff gets interesting, because this is where you can start to use your creativity to make stuff sound nice. For example, double strokes, right? We've got this first tom, right? So I move this one with them next to each other. Let's uh, put those next to each other. Put those. And 
find those. Okay. Let's just do this. And let's just do this. Right. These are double strokes, right? Double, 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 double. You see what I'm saying? So let's listen to how that sounds. Right? Doubles on everything. Now, what a lot of drummers like to do, especially metal drummers, what they do is they play on, we've got the toms here, right? The high toms. Dum, dum. And then they play two kick drums. Dum, dum. And then another two toms. Kick drums. There. Another two toms. Kick drums. And let's just say more toms and then snare drums right so let's just see how that would sound it would probably sound much better right that just has a nice kind of feel to it right so that is the double strokes right putting doubles on everything okay so the third one that i'm going to explain now this is the tricky one Okay, single strokes, double strokes, that's fine. Makes sense. Now, this last one is called a paradiddle. Okay, paradiddle. So, in drumming terms, they call it right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. But since we're doing sequencing, we will just name that up down up up down up down down because that will just make a lot more sense okay so for example if we just start at the start of our full now yeah we can just say up down uh, let me just start from the beginning actually it will be easier okay up down up up down up down down i suggest if you have a pen and paper with you write that down because you will forget it. Up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down. Okay. So you've got that over there. And actually, let's just, you know, let's just do it again. Up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down. Okay. And then let's go on. They'll be like, what did you do there? And then you must just tell them, well, I'm a beat expert. That's how I did it. <laughs> but you guys can see it's actually just very simple. And obviously, the sound will depend on where you place all of these. And um, they don't have to be as close to each other as what I'm doing here, right? You can move this one down, and these two up, right? You can literally move it how you want it. Okay, let's just keep it like that and see what we get. Okay, cool. So let's just keep that there like that for now, okay? Just with the paradiddles, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down. Okay. So we got that. Let's just exit our MIDI editor. Okay. So if we play from the start. Cool. Cool. It's different, but cool. Okay. So um, that's our sub phrase, right? The first four bars, right? with the fourth bar being a full. So what I'm going to do now is you can you can take the whole thing and just duplicate it, right, and be like, okay, cool, there's my eight bars, I'm done. But uh, uh, be more original. Wah. Anyway, okay, cool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this whole beat half time, okay, which also just gives a complete different feel to your whole song, right? And it's not that difficult. It's, it's, it's really, it's not that difficult. Okay, so let me just consolidate this clip. Zoop. Okay, double click. Okay, so we have those timekeepers, right? Where are those? There they are. There's the timekeepers, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're still going to put that on one, two, three, four. Okay, so. I uh, made the halftime beat, right? A beat that gets used a lot in music. So let's actually, let's just listen to what we have so far. Okay, so let's see. Paradiddles, up, down, up, up. Down, up, down, down. And then single stroke rolls, one, two, three, four on the kick drum. Okay, so that's just a combination. So use those 
use those um, use those rudiments, right? Um, they will help you a lot, and they really make your fills sound awesome and impressive. So, what do you guys think? Actually, what's your preferred genre of drums? What is the drums that you guys would want to sequence? Actually, tell me this. Um, I would really like to know for the future. And, yeah, I just want to know. Because a lot of guys are into hip-hop beats. And a lot of guys are into metal beats and rock kind of beats. And indie jumping beats. So, I know a lot of guys there that loves dance music. And they're all for that. So, just please let us know in the chat section. Communicate to us and tell us what genre of drums you would like to sequence. Okay, so, we've got our whole... Eight bar phrase with our two sub phrases, right? Now, the thing is, there's just one one thing that sucks. That is, if you sequence drums, it sounds it sounds like a robot. It really does. It sounds exactly like a robot, right? Because I mean, listen to that. Yeah, it sounds nice, but if you think about it. Every drum hit is equally as loud. And a drummer does not play every hit equally as loud, right? Not at all. And also, um, yeah, the loudness of your hits, the velocities of the hits, they are equally as loud, right? So, and they're all just precisely in time. Everything is precisely, precisely in time. And no drummer plays precisely in time face it none of them do right i can say that myself as well so how we fix this problem is for example okay so we've got let's just delete these all right so we're just working with our first sub phrase now so let's go into our first bar right this is our first bar over here so what we can do now to make it a bit more realistic. At the bottom here, you can see the velocities, right? The velocities is basically the volumes of each hit. Okay. So, let's listen to... Okay, yeah. There is our timekeepers. Let's start with them. Okay. So, on a Mac, if you hold in command, right? And you hover over that hit. Then you can see you get like this bracket type of icon, right? So, then you just left click... And you drag down, and you can hear it go softer. You can hear it go softer. And if you look at the bottom, where you can see all of the velocities, you can see it changing as well. Right. So, let's change the velocities of these notes. Make some of them softer, make some of them louder, right? And the same with the snares. Make some of them loud, some of them a bit softer, and some a bit louder. Okay, kick drums, ah, we can we can just leave those. And then these rides, which are also timekeepers, remember, we can just use them as well. Do that. Okay. Let's move them. Yeah, you don't have to do them all, right? Just some of them. Just some of them. Okay. So now we've got different velocities on these drums, right? So, now what about the timing thing? Then? How are we going to correct that? Now, the thing is, we can actually just select each drum and just move it a little. Ah, let me just put it on slip mode over here. Just move it a little off beat. As you can see, it's moving off beat, right? But you don't want to, I mean, you don't want to put it there because that's just going to sound like you you got a very sloppy drummer. So, just move it a little off time, a little off time, a little off time with that one as well. Right, that's the kicks. These timekeepers can really play play around with them, really. Okay, okay. Let's move them up a little bit. Snares as well. Move them a little off beat. Little off beat. Oh, that's a bit too much. Okay, you see, just like a little bit on each one of these drums, so that it doesn't sound that perfect right because no drummer plays that perfect i mean that is what makes us human it's literally not playing perfect because i mean why would they hire real drummers if they can just sequence drums if they want everything to be perfect because we actually add 
a human feel to the beat. You see what I'm saying? So let's exit this. So as you can see, the first bar, right? We edit those now. We made it more realistic. So let's take these two electronic drummers away. And now we've got this bar. Right? You can hear that the velocities are not equally the same anymore. And some of the hits are not exactly on time, right? Listen to how soft it starts to get. Right? And if, if you don't like that, I mean, just go into it, search for it. I think it was this one, actually. All right, just lift it up. Oop, I'm lifting everyone now. Right? So if it's just this one, you can just lift that velocity. And it may sound better now. So let's give it another listen. Oh, cool. sounds much more humanly. Okay, so command duplicate, command duplicate, and then we have our fill. You can obviously apply it to your fill as well, right? So we've got that beat. Actually, let's let's just apply it to some of these. Okay, so let's just take. Let's just take these four and let's just make them a bit softer. All right, maybe this one, maybe that one. This one a bit louder, that one a bit louder. Softer, softer, louder. Okay, cool. So, let's listen to what we have now. Right, that sounds, sounds much more dynamic. Ah, I like that. That sounds nice. You know, the dynamics, just the loud and the soft parts, it, it just makes it better. Okay, cool. So <laughs> now you've got that. So another thing to make it more realistic, right, is if we open contact, all right, and we see our whole drum kit, what you can do in contact is you can scroll down and go to the mixer, all right? And now if you can see, here's our kick, snare, hi-hat, and our toms, right? So here's just the the volume levels of them, right? The faders, which you can move the levels up and down. And then very important at the top, you see pan, 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 pan. Now, pan, right, stands for panorama, right? So, and for some of you who's ever played with those nice fancy smartphones that you can take these very cool panorama pictures, it just gives it looks like the camera is moving right and that's where that's where panorama comes from right it's moving so they want the sound to move that's why we have pan ops because you can actually move the sound around and what i mean by that is if we go back to our kit we see how our kit is actually set up right kick in the middle snare over here just a bit off center and then we have our um timekeepers our hyatt completely to the left, right? So, for example, this is the drummer's perspective, okay? Drummer's perspective. And if you're standing there in the audience, you can pan the drums like that, but we're gonna pan a drummer's perspective. So, kick in the middle. Let's go to our mixer. The kick drum is panned in the middle. See, so kind of left or right, but we keep it in the middle. And snare drum, right? We checked, the snare drum was a little bit off center. And the hi-hats, was a little bit more to our left, right? If we go back and look at how the kit is set up. Then we have our high tom, mid tom, but to the left, and then mid low, and our floor tom to the right. So let's pan it that way, right? I mean, that is the main point of music is we want people to feel, right? It's like watching a 3D movie. Panning is exactly like watching a 3D movie because the elements are coming out and you feel like you are actually there in the movie and then you're like wow this is awesome so this is the same kind of thing same kind of thing panning makes it more realistic it feels like the drums are around you and you enjoy it more and you literally just enjoy it more so let's just listen to the beat we have now at the moment Right, especially with this part. Listen to how the toms are placed. Right? 
And also the snare drum It's a bit off center Yeah, a bit to the left Because that's how I panned it So that just makes your drum beat much more realistic And with the panning And the velocity changes And moving it a little bit out of time Just give it, gives it that ultimate human feel right and that is exactly what we're going for so that is exactly what we have by applying those changes so just the last thing that we're going to look at is how to use existing drum loops right in your session because with contact you have existing drum loops so the thing is you can use you can use these existing loops but the thing is uh, it's just it's just a, it's not you it's not you. You didn't, you didn't create it. You know what I'm saying. And also, like, um, it it probably won't match the song that you have because every song is different, right? So, if you see in contact, right, you have your grooves up here where it says groove. Okay, so if I click play, yeah, right, there's a groove. So if I press on the side there, that's that's my next groove. Right, so imagine I want to use this groove now. Okay, cool. So then you see that little symbol there. I click on it and drag, and well, there you can see, drag it into my session, right, onto my instrument track. Just let it go, and there you can see, there you can see all of the drums, right? There you have it, all right. But um, actually, just for curiosity, which plugin do you guys use when when you program drums uh, that's actually a very interesting question because there's so much plugins for drums vst instruments and you get crazy stuff out there so i would just like to know what do you use to program drums right and how do you use it because there's so much features in here so much stuff that you can change and do but we go in detail on that another day okay so just to go back at what we're busy with so here's my loop right Cool. Now, you see, it is actually, it's two bars. It's bar six and bar seven, right? So I can duplicate that. Okay, cool. Right? And now I've got, whoopsie. Whoopsie. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So now we've got this, right? There are our four bars, but there's no fill here. There's no fill. It's just the beat. So what you can do now is you can search for another groove who's got some kind of toms in it. So let's just search for something. There, there, that one. Yeah, at the end of that groove, there was a kind of a dum do dum dum So let's take that one, let's grab it in, and zoom, another two bars, right? But we only want to use this last section. So I can just click there, and I can Command E, just to split it up, I can delete this one. So, there I've got the piece. Let's just listen to it, is it? Okay, wait. Let's undo that. Ah, it was the first piece. So, let's just delete the second piece. Take that one. Let's put this in the middle. Zoop. I can just delete that. Now I can just literally put it on there. And now, exact same, we've got a subphrase. We've got two beats, uh, two bars, right? And then we have another bar of the same beat. And then we have our tom variation. So let's just listen to that. Whoops. Right there, we had some variation in it. Okay, cool. So there you have it. And another thing which I forgot to mention is about the symbols, right? The symbols that we use to accent a new part, right? So if I just take this drum, drum groove that we did earlier on, remember the one that we created first? There's our full. Right. So in the start, we can insert a crash symbol just to make it more realistic. There we go. 
Today we have a crash somewhere. Right. Grid mode. Okay. So now the beat will start. And also, even if we want to, in this little full section, we can add one there as well. But let's add one of those effect symbols. Let's add that China symbol. There you go. There's the China symbol. Let's add one of those. Okay. So let's exit this and then let's play it back. Now it's much more realistic. You guys heard that effect symbol float in there? It sounded actually quite nice. So there we have how to create beats, right? Using bars and beats and understanding what it is and understanding phrasing because you can just start with one bar at a time and edit it as you go along. It will literally, guys, it will make your workflow much easier, much quicker. And I promise you, you will pick up on it quickly, especially if you use those rudiments that we talked about for fills. Your music will sound great. Your music will really, really sound great. And yeah. Actually, just for um, just for an interesting question, what do you guys actually use these drum loops that are given inside of VST instruments, or do you always create your own original drum beats? That's actually something that I would really like to know. So, um, chat to us, leave a comment in the chat section, tell me about how you do it, and. That will just be very interesting to see. And maybe in future webinars, we will cover those specific genres of drum sequencing. Cool. So thank you guys very much for tuning in to our very first webinar. Uh, I hope you guys had as much fun as me. And also, I hope you guys uh, learned something today, right? Which is the main purpose of all of this. So thank you very much. And Martin. Thank you very much, Bern. And definitely see you again here. And communicate with you. So I hope it was value valuable. Uh, we are running a special offer tonight that if you register just after this webinar, uh, you will receive a 10% discount on our introduction to digital music production course that is starting on the 26th of August. It is this coming Saturday. Um, so just off, uh, go to the offer that we present to you. Uh, on the link on your right, on this webinar link. Otherwise, you are more welcome uh, to join, uh, to go and visit our website. It's uh, www.mnd.co.za. Go check it out. And if you guys are uh, want to join us uh, at the college, uh, go and check us our offerings and what we what we do here at MND Multimedia Technology Institute. So. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys, and we hope to see you with our next webinar. So thank you very much, Bern, and have a lovely evening. Over and out.